Hello, online arts community. Welcome to Fleetwood Jordan Theater's Stay Creative in collaboration with Piven Theater Workshop, a journey through the history of Black theater, a series with me, Professor Bria Walker. Today's Black theater history lecture is on the world-renowned, award-winning Negro Ensemble Company in New York City. Prior to the 1960s, opportunities for Black writers to get their plays produced and for performers to perform in quality plays that reflected the truth of Black life were few and far between. The Negro Ensemble Company, or NEC, was founded in 1967 in New York City by actor, playwright, director, Douglas Turner Ward, actor, Robert Hooks, and theater manager and producer, Gerald Crone. But, its origins can be traced back to 1965. Robert Hooks and Douglas Turner Ward were castmates in the touring company of A Raisin in the Sun. It was there that they would become friends and envision starting a theater company run by and for black people. An initial step in the formation of the company was Hooks's performance in Leroy Jones' Dutchman. On his nights off, Hooks would speak to the neighborhood kids at the Hudson Guild in Chelsea, New York, about being black in the theater. This led to the formation of the Group Theater Workshop, where he worked with these local kids on learning and creating theater. Hooks and his creative partner, Barbara Antia, decided to produce an evening of work for the parents and friends of the children of the Group Theater Workshop, which included a one-act play by Douglas Turner Ward. A New York Times critic who attended the production recommended that Ward's plays be produced. They took the critic's advice. Hooks raised the money and Ward continued to write plays. They recruited theater manager Gerald Crone and in November of 1965, the three men produced an evening of two satiric one act plays called Day of Absence and Happy Ending. Day of Absence is a reverse minstrel show where the actors, who are all black, except for one white actor, are in whiteface. They perform the roles of the white residents of a small southern town where, one day, all of the black residents of the town mysteriously disappear. Happy Ending is a comedy about two sisters, Ellie and Vi, who work as a maid and laundress for a wealthy white family. The husband finds that the wife has been unfaithful, and Ellie and Vi worry if they will lose their jobs. The plays, which premiered at St. Mark's Playhouse in Greenwich Village, were a huge success. They ran for over 500 performances and earned Ward an Obie Award for acting and a Drama Desk Award for playwriting. The productions also caught the attention of the New York Times. The Times invited Ward to write an article on the position of Black artists in American theater. The article was published in August of 1966 and was titled American Theater for Whites Only and served as a manifesto for the development of Black theater. According to blackpast.org, quote, in the article, Ward stressed the need for an established Black theater by African American playwrights with an unfettered, imaginative Negro angle of vision. He targeted Blacks as the primary audience, but he also wanted to attract an informed white audience that shared common experiences to readily understand and debate the playwright's explorations." End quote. The Times article caught the attention of W. McNeil Lowry at the Ford Foundation. He encouraged Ward to apply for a Ford grant to begin a theater such as the one he talked about in his article. Ward applied, and the Ford Foundation awarded Ward a $434,000 grant to establish the Negro Ensemble Company. Ward and Crone teamed with Robert Hooks, who brought with him his group theater workshop. They made St. Mark's Playhouse the permanent home of NEC, and in 1967, the Negro Ensemble Company was founded. The resident company was chosen along with directors and designers, instructors were hired for the free workshops, and a theatrical crafts apprenticeship program was set up. The NEC's inaugural season began in January of 1968 with the production of Peter Weiss's Song of the Lusitanian Bogey. The NEC's second season, in 1969, saw the production of God is a Guess What by Ray McIver, Ceremonies and Dark Old Men by Lonnie Elder III, Paul Carter Harrison's The Great Mac Daddy, 
in a series of one-act plays that included String by Alice Childress. Other notable productions included Nigerian playwright Wole Soyinka's Kongi's Harvest, Joseph Walker's The River Niger, and Leslie Lee's The First Breeze of Summer. The NEC compiled a stellar roster of playwrights such as Lonnie Elder III, Leslie Lee, Philip Hayes Dean, Judy Ann Mason, Charles Fuller, and Sam Art Williams. Although they were paving the way for artists of color and producing socially relevant content, the NEC faced political and economic hardships. Grant money was running out, and even sellout audiences at the St. Mark's couldn't cover the budget. In the 1972-73 season, the resident company was disbanded, staff was cut back, training programs canceled, and salaries deferred. The decision was made to produce only one new play a year. Fortunately, the first play they produced, The River Niger by Joseph Walker, was a huge success and was the first NEC production to move to Broadway. The play helped to ensure the continued success of the company. In 1981, Charles Fuller's A Soldier's Play would prove to be the most successful production out of the NEC. It would win both the Critics Circle Award for Best New Play and the Pulitzer Prize for Drama. The NEC also produced a stellar roster of actors, such as Mary Alice, Debbie Allen, Angela Bassett, Roscoe Lee Brown, Adolf Caesar, Rosalind Cash, David Downing, Judy Ann Elder, Lawrence Fishburne, Francis Foster, Arthur French, Louis Gossett Jr., Moses Gunn, Cleavon Little, Samuel L. Jackson, Lauren Jones, S. Apatha Merkerson, Stephanie Mills, Denise Nichols, Ron O'Neill, Felicia Rashad, Roxy Roker, Esther Roll, Richard Roundtree, Glenn Turman, Denzel Washington, Hattie Mae Winston, Charles Weldon, Ali Woods, and that's just naming a few. In July of 1980, the theater moved from St. Mark's Playhouse in Greenwich Village to Theater 4 in Harlem, where it stayed until 1991. According to NEC's website, quote, since its founding in 1967, the NEC has produced more than 200 new plays and provided a theatrical home for more than 4,000 cast and crew members. Among its ranks have been some of the best Black actors in television and film. The NEC is respected worldwide for its commitment to excellence and has won dozens of honors and awards. While these accolades point to the larger success of the NEC, it has created something far greater. It has been a constant source and sustenance for Black actors, directors, and writers as they have worked to break down walls of racial prejudice." End quote. Needless to say, the Negro Ensemble Company is a treasure in the landscape of American theater. They were a model for Black excellence in the arts. The company's legacy is one that permeates our culture and continues to inspire artists to this day. Viewers, don't forget our call to action. We want to hear how Black theater has impacted your lives. Send us your stories. Keep your submissions to 400 words or less. And if you have any pictures that you like to share, send them our way as well. Submit your work to fjtheater at cityofeviston.org by 12 p.m. on Friday, May 8th. Please note, by submitting your work, you grant Fleetwood Jordan Theater the right to review and share your submission via video and on our social media platforms for the Stay Creative series. Don't be shy. We can't wait to hear how Black theater has impacted your lives.